today's video, we're going to be pimping out my original G3 iMac. So the first thing you guys may notice is that we are not using the bed uh, workbench setup uh, that we're also used to here. No, I have not moved. Uh, I'm simply trying something out in the next room over. I've got these little wooden, um, I don't know exactly what you call them. I think they're stands that you set up and so you can eat, like, put dinner on them and eat dinner and watch TV. Uh, <laughs> but they're pretty sturdy and they work well as, like, makeshift tables. So I just want to see if maybe uh, shooting in here on a little bit more actually of a stable uh, foundation. We're just going to see how it works. So um, that out of the way, what are we talking about in this video? Well, we are talking about some of the weird and wacky uh, accessories that came out for the original uh, G3 iMac. Uh, of course, most of these accessories, I believe all of them, uh, are also compatible with the later iMacs, but we're going to be using them on my original Revision A uh, G3 iMac. Uh, this is the Bondi Blue or Bondi Blue uh, iMac. I believe this model came out in 98 and this is the absolute original Revision A uh, model and it's pretty much stock. So we're we're gonna look at some of the accessories I've acquired for this thing. I do have a video just about this machine uh, so if you're interested in learning more about this Revision A uh, G3 iMac and we open it up and take a look inside of it and play some games watch my original video I'll put a link in the description and if I remember uh, I'll put a card which should be I think up in the corner right here so actually I have not fired this thing up in a very long time I'm assuming it still works because I haven't done anything to it so um, well, last time when I did the video on it and the last time I used it, it worked fine. Even the speakers worked fine. So I guess the first part of this video is just uh, firing this guy up and seeing if it still works. Okay, so we're plugged in now. So I'm going to hit the power button and uh, let's hope this guy still fires up. That's a good sign. I see the power button lit up there. Nothing on the screen yet, but I definitely can hear it. Uh, should be, should be seeing something here soon. But I don't see any. Okay, I think okay, that's good. Power button turned green. I just heard the monitor click. The suspense, man. The suspense. There we go. Yes. Okay, that's a good sign. Okay, it looks like. Looks like we got, is that a happy Mac? Yeah, Mac OS 9.2. All right, so this is good news. So it's firing up, um, so it looks like it's working. So uh, now that we know this machine's working, again, I'm not going to go over the specs of this machine. Uh, I did a previous video on it, as I said before. Uh, but we're just going to look at some of the accessories that came out for this guy. So the first thing I want to talk about is actually an accessory I don't have. Um, so sorry if it's a little dark. Let me see if I can bring a little bit of light back here. Okay, there we go. Um, so right here on the side, uh, on these early models, uh, you can open this little panel up. And uh, you've got some USB, like Ethernet and modem. Looks like some audio jacks. And then you have this thing right here. Um, there's a screw, and this will come off, and there's kind of a port. Uh-oh, made a weird sound. Uh, there's kind of a port here. Um, I forget, I, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it starts with an M. It's like a mezzanine port or something like that. Anyways, legend has it that they did make a Voodoo card. I, I don't, I think it's based on the Voodoo 2 uh, that will connect to this port right here, and it will give you... Uh, basically a Voodoo 2 card for your G3 iMac. But it's kind of a major thing and it's kind of cool. I, I, I wish I had one. Um, wish I had one to show you guys, but I thought it was worth mentioning. But the one of those, the Voodoo 2 for the uh, original G3 iMacs, I do not have. Well, it appears that the 
speakers are indeed working, um, but I can't open this stupid CD drive. Um, I touched that, and it feels like it might want, but it's just not opening. Um, that might be a little roadblock if any of our accessories require, uh, like a driver on a CD install or something. That's, hmm, that could be a problem. I kind of pried at the edges here, and I did get this, okay, now, come on, there we go. I did get this CD drive to kind of open. I wonder if it works. Let's try, uh, should be able to run Tomb Raider Gold just fine. So, um, let me see, I'm just curious if it will actually run and install this game. Got to be real precise with it. Hmm, yeah, it seems to be working. It's actually installing Tomb Raider, so uh, it looks like the CD drive still works. It looks like it's still good. It's just kind of uh, kind of finicky. I don't like... You kind of have to push it in, and now it's going to be a pain to eject again, uh, um, I think. Unless I can use the eject command, and I'm not sure how well the motor that ejects is working, but... Um, I mean, the good thing is it does seem to be working. It's just kind of uh, finicky. Now, the first common issue that people always talk about when they talk about this era of vintage Macs, and specifically the uh, G3 iMac, is the mouse, uh, known as the Puck Mouse, because, well, it kind of looks like a puck, and it's, it's fairly functional. I mean, it works. It's not a laser mouse. It has a ball, but just the form factor, like, after long periods of, of using it, it kind of can cramp up your hand. It's just, it's very small. Um, yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> I'm not a huge Mac guy. I don't use the Mac, like, a lot. At least this specific one. So, um, I don't have any personal stories about this thing cramping up my joints or anything. But it is, it doesn't seem so bad at first. But I can see how over time this thing can be, uh, a terrible. <laughs> so thankfully um, you can switch it out with a different USB mouse um, or something like this. This is just something I happen to have. This is a, one of those like a trackball mouse. Um, I think this is for, let's see, King Kingston uh, oh, Kingston Orbit trackball for Mac. Okay, so this is specifically for the Mac. I, I think this will probably work on a PC just fine, uh, but I think this was specifically for a Mac. You could tell you know, the color, uh, whatever, Bondi or Bandai Blue or whatever they call it. I think it's Bondi Blue um, of the original uh, G3 iMac. So it color matches. And this is a good, this is a big upgrade uh, right here using something like this. Um, but another little weird accessory came, that came out is uh, these things. This one's clear, but you can get them in like different colors. You can get them in matching colors of the same color blue. And this one's from... Mac Ally or Mac Ally, um, and it should just click on. Uh, yeah, there we go. That's that's. Oh, we want this. I think you want the cord. Obviously, I think you want the cord coming out here. So it's a it's a little off center. Hold on. Okay, so that's better. Um, so there we go. So you have the cord going out there, and that. It's a little thing, uh, but it does make a pretty big difference. It's just I can rest my hand on there. I don't feel as kind of like it's crunched. It's a little more relaxed. Yeah, that works much better. Um, I don't think these are too expensive. Um, when I was looking for this a couple years ago, I was looking for one of these online, and it was actually cheaper to find one that was already attached to a mouse than to just find them individually. Um, so I don't know what these go for, but they're not really rare. They were pretty common. Uh, add-ons. It's a, it's a pretty good solution for the issue of the puck mouse, but then again, you could just swap this thing out for a different type of mouse, uh, like that trackball mouse we saw. So, um, but yeah, if you're wondering, uh, they exist. And so the next little accessory, uh, is this a pretty normal? We're going from, like, normal accessories to the weirder ones, uh, as, as the video goes on, but this is a pretty, um, essential little accessory. So, you see, I believe the G3 iMac was the first of the Macs to not have a floppy drive built in. Um, so there was no floppy drive on this. You had the CD drive, but 
no floppy. Um, so this was kind of the solution to that. It's just a uh, USB floppy drive. It's nothing that special with 1.44 uh, megabytes. This one is from VST. Uh, this is a VST USB floppy drive with color kit. So basically you have this little color plate here that you can swap out. Um, this one has, you know, the matching matching color, so everything's color matched. But if you had a different colored uh, iMac, you could get different color plates. Like when I got this drive, it came with a whole packet of uh, different color plates that you can swap and put on there. Um, so this does have a CD drive with drivers on it. But I'm guessing I had, I think I already had installed them on this machine before. So I should be able to just plug it in and it should work because I believe the drivers are actually already installed. Alright, so the drive uh, does appear to be working. I just um, connected the USB to the little port there next to where I have the mouse uh, plugged in. And uh, I have I found these really two old floppy disks. Now these were done on a computer, but seeing as this is uh, OS 9.2, if they're just like JPEGs or something, it should read them. Um, I have MePick and Picks. Um, I'm assuming these were back in high school, so um, I, I'm not 100% sure what's on these. Um, so probably like pictures that we... I didn't have a digital camera. So I, we, I probably took these pictures with a Polaroid, and then I did have a scanner, and then I probably scanned them into the computer. So they're probably like super low quality, mid to late 90s. So this would have been high school, so this would have been my, um, my goth years. So these... Uh, these should be interesting. I'm hesitant to actually click on what pops up. It's just gonna be like, it's probably embarrassing. Okay, well, okay, these are not me picks. These are, um, looks like scuzzy stuff? Like, oak, oak, look, look, oak, CD, ROM, DOS, okay, this is like a DOS, these are like drivers. Okay, let me try the other, um, the other floppy. Okay. Um, so that one came up. Floppy's actually called Pix. It's not uh, just like untitled. And then let me... Yeah, oh boy. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, yeah, yeah. You can tell right away these are from a the goth years. We've got anger, um, sacrifice, spelled very poorly, animosity, fan. Does, let's go with G. Michaels, like George M Michaels? That would be... Yeah, okay, uh, let's go with the group. Um, oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Uh, yeah. It was a different time, guys. It was a, it was a different time. Um, okay, so anyways, <laughs> the, the floppy drive. Oh god. Okay, so the floppy drive works. Um, uh, love the dog collar, too. Yeah, that was... Different time, guys, a different time. Anyways, um, yeah, okay, let's move on to the next accessory. And is it just me, or does my friend here kind of look like a 90s goth uh, John Carmack, or maybe that's just me? I, I don't know. Um, I think this was taken at, uh, we used to hang out at uh, Borders Books. If you guys are familiar with Borders Books, they went out of business. Uh, Barnes & Nobles stuck around, but Borders went out of business. Uh, we thought we were intellectuals. We would hang out there all the time, but, um, okay, anyways. All right, so back in the other room for a moment to take a look at this next accessory, and this is the I station. So everything that had to do with the iMac started with an I. I station, I this, I floppy drive, I that. Um, so if it's an I something, it's, it's probably for the, uh, original iMac. <laughs> so, um, although this one here says it will also work with standard monitors, so it is also for a PC, but you could tell by the um, coloring and stuff, it's really, this was really meant for your um, iMac. So, uh, what this is, is just kind of like a, a stand for it, I guess. See, so you can kind of set it on this stand, and it raises it up, and you can swivel, and it even has this really dubious cheap metal Thing that pulls out and you can put your keyboard on it. It looks really precarious to um, actually type on it. I feel like anytime you hit push a button it's gonna dip. Um, <laughs> it's like a little spot maybe to set your mouse. Um, let's see. 
Monitor swivel stand uh, holds up to 60 pounds, raises monitor 4.5, swivels 100 degrees, it tilts. Uh, Chrome keyboard support doubles as a handle. Hmm. <laughs> uh, Non-skid holes for iMac and standard 15 and 17 inch monitors. Provides cable management and mouse storage. Well, that's nice. Um, so, I've never actually opened this box. Um, so here's the back of it. And, uh, you know, it shows us we got the anti-skid. Uh, we got the cable manager, the mouse holder. So there is a little mouse holder. And uh, we have a keyboard holder here. And, um, yeah. So let me take this thing. I've never actually opened this. I hope it's in there. And, uh, yeah, okay. It looks like it's in there. All right. So here we go. It's even got the plastic over it. Ooh, what's this? Um, looks like maybe, like grips maybe you put underneath it um yeah, kind of blending into the bed here but uh, yeah there's a little spot for where you can put the mouse does doesn't seem to be swiveling well yeah okay so that's so it does indeed swivel um little spot for a mouse this thing does come out has these little rubber things to kind of help support the uh, keyboard. It, it does seem very loose and precarious. I guess this is what they would call cable management, which it is kind of something. You put your cables through there and it kind of holds them in place. It's This is a, a very simple accessory. Um, so let's let's put the uh, let's put the Mac on it and see how it works. Okay, so it's not it's not terrible. Um, right now I have the mouse tucked away in the little mouse holder. It actually, the indent is kind of oval, so it actually does sort of support it with that, although it's kind of backwards. You have to pull it out and turn it. Um, let me see, I guess you could put it in that way uh, if you wanted. So I guess it works, uh, even with the little thing on there. Um, this thing, though... I mean, if there's a table under it to support it, um, you know, it's not bad. It kind of adds an extra bit of tilt to it. But let me see what happens when I um, move the table away. I mean, it, it, it kind of works. I don't know if it's supposed to be used for this purpose where it's on the edge of a desk. But I mean, yeah, I mean, it is, yeah, wobbly. I feel like if I press a button a little too hard, this whole thing is going to come, like, fall over. But I don't know if it was kind of meant to be used like that, or is it just like an extra support for if you have a, a table underneath, which now doesn't want to... Uh, okay. Um, so, okay, well, does it swivel? Does the swivel work well? No. <laughs> uh, 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 okay, yeah, I mean, it swivels. It swivels better... Then without it, I guess, you're not... I mean, it swivels. Um, technically, it works. I mean, it's not the smoothest swivel, but it's more than you're going to get without it. Um, otherwise, you just have to pick up the whole iMac and turn it. Um, so, I guess it works. I don't know. Three and a half, two, two and a half out of five stars for the iStand. How about that? Now for... Well, what's probably the most interesting and rarest of the accessories I'm going to show here, uh, this is the iDock from CompuCable. Um, so these things are pretty uncommon. Actually, specifically, this is the iDock 2, which I believe is a little more uncommon than the original iDock. Uh, so basically, this is just something, it's almost like a hub. Uh, so you put your Mac on top and it swivels. Um, and on this model, the iDock 2 actually has a built-in uh, floppy disk drive right here. I believe it's a 1.44 megabyte. Uh, the original iDock just didn't have this. Uh, I think the cutout was there, but it just didn't come with the um, floppy drive. I believe that's the main difference between the iDock 1 and 2. Uh, actually, this one doesn't even bother to say iDock 2 on there. It just says iDock. Uh, but if we look underneath... Um, the sticker does say iDock2. 
Um, so another main draw of this thing is the connections on the back. So uh, it takes a DC power supply, six to nine volt uh, host. So it would this would where you would uh, connect it up to your iMac, and then it should give you one, two, three, four, four USB ports. Uh, I'm not real familiar with Mac, so I'm not sure with the Geo 1 and 2. I think those are some kind of communication ports. I'm not sure. But it also actually gives you an ADB port. Although I've heard that uh, this port doesn't actually work ever. So I don't know. I actually have the drivers. I've never tested this out. I do have the drivers for it, uh, which I have on the Mac, although I haven't installed them yet. Uh, so I don't know what to expect with this thing. I, I actually don't know if it will work, but it is it is pretty neat. So uh, what we'll do now, we'll put the iMac on here and we'll connect it. And uh, we'll, we'll run the install program and we'll see if anything happens. We'll see if we get it to work. All right, so I have the iDock 2 uh, all plugged in. Um, it's There's a little light on the back of it. You can see that it's glowing. Uh, software needed for... USB device, unnamed device is not available. So I might just need to install the drivers. Um, I'm going to cancel that for now. Uh, but while this is here, let's take a look at the swiveling on this thing uh, compared to the eye stand. So it, I mean, it does, it is a little bit, it, it's a little tougher to swivel. Um, it kind of takes two hands. But it does feel like a little bit of a firmer of a base. Um, but it doesn't swivel quite as nicely as the eye stand does. Um, so, let me just kind of zoom in on the monitor a little bit here. Probably doesn't look too great. Sorry about that. Uh, but I already have a little folder called iDock. And there's the iDock installer. And then, uh, hopefully... There we go. Installation was successful. If you are finished, uh, press, blah, press quick. What the? Installation was successful. If you are finished, Alert. click quit. Installation was successful. Thank you for, for thank you for telling me that. Okay. So apparently our installation was successful. Um, I don't know. Do Macs work like a PC? Do you have to restart them every time? I'm gonna restart it. Um, so let me see. I'm just going to restart just to um, just to be extra sure. So when I come back, we'll see if there's any progress. I'm going to try. The first thing I'm going to try is um, where's that disc with those ridiculous images, pictures? Okay, so uh, I'm going to try the same disc, same old disc that worked before with our uh, USB floppy drive, and I'm just going to put it in here and see if it works, see if it detects it or anything. Well, it looks like it's trying to read it. That's good. And hey, look at that. Look at that. Looks like it's reading the floppy disks. That's that's pretty cool. I mean, this this is cool. Uh, but to just have it kind of built in and you don't have this kind of external thing kind of hanging around, um, it streamlines it a little bit, makes the whole setup a little bit more sleek. So I, I kind of like that. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, let's do the, just to make, just to make sure, pull up another picture of, uh, my friend here looking like. John Carmack, sort of. Young Goth got the Manson shirt. Um, all right, enough of that. All right, so that works. Uh, out of curiosity, let me see what happens if I in, uh, put plug this into one of these USB ports on the back of the iDock, and uh, then we got two floppy drives. All right, so looks like the light came on for a moment. And uh, there shouldn't be any problem. It should work just like a simple USB hub. 
so I don't really expect any issues. Yeah, a uh, little faster. Uh, it's a little faster than this built-in one, so uh, if speed is a concern, um, you know, you can always plug that in there. All right, so that's working. Very nice. Oh, what do we want to test now? I mean, it seems to be more or less working. I don't have anything to test those COM ports. Um, let me get an ATB mouse um, just to see if it actually works. All right, so here is our ADB bus mouse here. Um, this is a newer one. This is an Apple Desktop Bus Mouse 2. Oh, there we go. This is an Apple Desktop Bus Mouse 2. Um, so I'm going to install this into the iDock 2, and uh, we'll see if it works. Okay, so it appears to actually be kind of working. Um, it might be that this mouse needs clean, but it's it actually will move, you know. Um, nothing's happening there, but like, it's actually moving the mouse, um, although very awkwardly and slowly, but that might be the, might be the mouse needs cleaned or something. Oh uh, yeah, look, and if I can, so it's, it's kind of working. Um, again, I don't know if it's the mouse that's the problem or it's just doesn't work that well normally, but it's, I'm getting something that seems to be a lot more than a lot of people have reported getting. Um, when using the ADB port on the iDock, so interesting. I'd, I'd still probably just go with a uh, USB mouse, especially seeing as um, this thing should add. Uh, well, it takes up one uh, USB port, uh, but you still have one, so now you have four, five. So it turns two USB ports into five. So even as just like a fancy hub, um, it works pretty well. And then, you know, the built-in floppy drive, a little bit slower than this, this guy, but, I mean, it's nice to have it. So, uh, overall, I kind of like this iDock. It's, it's not too much. Um, the iStand is kind of, like, janky. Uh, where this, this thing's pretty solid. It just kind of sits under there. It kind of looks a little bit more natural. Um, it doesn't look as cheap as the iStand. Um, so, I don't know, four out of five stars? I... I don't know. It's it's not bad. The yeah, iDock, um, it's not bad. I, I, I was thinking I was going to have some issues with it, like setting it up and getting it to work, but it seems to be working just fine. Um, it's actually working a little bit better than it was a minute ago. Um, yeah, still not great, but it could be just a mouse. So yeah, pretty nice. So that was a brief look at some of the accessories that I personally own for the G3 iMac. There are many, many more out there. Um, I know there's like, I've seen little like side speakers, because a lot of times those speakers suck, um, and they, they dry out and they sound real crackly or they stop working. Um, so there's a lot of like, I mean, you can hook up any kind of speakers, but I've seen like speakers that look like little iMacs, <laughs> that like gimmicky little iMac speakers that you can plug in and, that's just, there's lots of accessories that they made for this thing. Usually they're all color, they're all in that Bondi or Bondi blue, um, or they have little plates, kind of like the USB drive, that you can swap out because uh, they came in a bunch of colors. That was like their thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, I all these accessories that I've, I've tried out today, um, they were pretty useful. The eye stand is probably the least useful. I mean... It works. The little holder for the keyboard's kind of janky, uh, but I mean, if if you want something to like raise it up a little bit and uh, kind of give you a swivel base, I mean, it's serviceable. Uh, I like the eye dock. It worked actually a little better than I thought it would. Um, it's kind of cool to have like the built-in floppy drive, but but yeah, I, I think it all worked pretty well there, uh, pimping my G3 iMac. So, so yeah, so I hope that helps you out in case you're looking to pimp your G3 iMac. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. And yes, because I am a sentimental old man, I still have the dog collar um, that we saw in that picture. Uh, I don't think it still fits though. Let me see. It's yeah, yeah. No, it doesn't. It actually doesn't fit. It would probably it would strangle me. Uh, 
if I tried to put it on. But yeah, still got it. 